All right, so um, getting on WordPress.com is good to start with, but it's going to run into a lot of limitations eventually, pretty quickly. So what you actually want is a real service provider. And because I'm recommending um, a WordPress-based website, we have lots of options. Big companies, small companies, local, national, etc. So I'm going to mention a few companies here. Um, the big caveat that I will say is that you want to go with a big brand name company to get your website there because if you if you don't um, you might have service interruptions you might have slow speeds you might not have very good results and you've got this website you need to get it online you need your own dot com and therefore you need um, you know real service so here's here's a few that I will mention. Uh, one of them is Bluehost.com. Bluehost.com is a big, famous company. It's been around a long time. Um, this and the, all the other ones I'm going to show you are all trying to do the same thing. They're trying to sell you your own little piece of the internet, uh, and for you to have a .com, a .net, a .biz, or whatever you need to go through these providers. And these ones that I'm going to show you, I think three or four of them, they're not the only ones, of course. Maybe you already know about one. Uh, maybe you have an account at one of them. Great. Use it for this class. Or uh, if you want to switch, there's a lot of options. But here it's telling you $3.95 a month. Hosting with genuine support. $3.95 a month. Um, and usually, these because these companies are in such competition with each other, they've got a lot of deals. And so these guys are saying $3.95 a month, but then regular price, you know, these other prices, $7.95, $9.99. Uh, so you need to check what the details are. All of these have uh, some way to contact them, phone number, a live chat to get the details about how much does it really cost, do I get this, do I get that. Just about any one of these providers is going to work as long as you have the basic uh, the basic features. Um, sometimes you're going to see that some of them say specifically optimize hosting for WordPress. You have to be careful about that because some companies will sell you a service optimized for WordPress that then doesn't give you other features. For example, I've dealt with 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 some of these that if you buy the WordPress optimized one, you cannot add any more websites unless you pay for it. And what I mean by that is um, you can have victor.com and on a regular provider you simply create a new folder or a new directory on your site and you've got my new site. And in that subdirectory you've got a completely different website. Uh, a new copy of WordPress, completely different, new plugins and all of that. Some of these solutions uh, with Bluehost, I'm not sure, but with other ones, if you get the one that is, sometimes it's called managed WordPress, this one seems to be optimized hosting for WordPress, sometimes some of these have that limitation that you cannot do this that I'm saying. You cannot put a subdirectory with a different WordPress site on it. You can only use your top level one. And if you did want something uh, here, like you know the bakery, you'd probably have to pay extra. So be careful about that, about if you're going to buy service, that it's the full featured one. It's, it's a very big buzzword to get the managed WordPress, the, the special WordPress version, but usually it doesn't quite work out. And so Bluehost at the moment is saying these various prices. I'm going to go just quick look at some of this. I haven't seen it today. So this one's saying $12.49 for the first month. Starting at $12.49 for the first month. Always read the fine print because oftentimes these starting prices are good, but then they go back up to uh, normally $24.99. And honestly, that sounds pretty expensive for the blogger level and professional level, $75 business. Well, what do all of these in 
what do all of these encompass? You can get 100 million hits to your website. You've got 30 gigabytes hard drive space, 30 gigabytes of backups, 2 gigabytes of RAM, manage, you, you can manage five WordPress sites. Again, I would look into it exactly what does that mean. Am I going to get victor.com, victorsbakery.com, victorsdogwalking.com? Does that mean I'm going to get five names like that, five domains? Maybe. You have to check with their services. Right here you can do 10 of them, 20 or 30. Does it include a domain? Because when we look at this, we will see that sometimes they make a distinction, a big one sometimes, there's domain and then there's hosting. Here it says an included domain. The domain is your web address, bluehost.com, john.com, uh, victorswebdesigns.org. That's the domain, the domain name. Here it's talking about specifically hosting. Hosting is the hard drive where you upload everything, the RAM, um, the physical aspect of things, that's the hosting, and you have to get both uh, domain and hosting. And here they're saying you get, it, you, you get one included. Again, I'll read the fine print and it might say free domain name first year. Oftentimes that's what it is. And after that it's normal price of about $12, $15, $9 per year. It depends. 24-7 support using cPanel, that's one of the modern ways to manage this stuff on the server, cPanel. This says CDN, SiteLock CDN. Uh, if it's what I think it is, a CDN should, way to, should be a way to speed up your site. Uh, it distributes your content across the network, CDN, Content Distribution Network. In theory, it's supposed to make your site faster. I, I don't see that on, on all the providers. These guys are saying they've got CDN from SiteLock, um, which sounds good, but again, I'd have to read further to see the details. They've all got some security. And SSL. Does anyone know what's SSL? For security. For security. When you see that little lock on the top corner of your web browser, that's SSL. Um, Bluehost is going to take your credit card and your home address and phone number and all of that and by default traffic that flies across the internet is unencrypted. Anyone could um, could spy on that data floating around, get your credit cards and all of that. To combat that we've got websites that say HTTPS. Uh, you're used to perhaps HTTP that's the plain old web um, protocol. HTTPS is the secure one, and it's not free. Um, you have to pay for it. They've got the lock, they've paid for it. It looks like they give you, on some of these levels, getting up to the higher level, you get an SSL certificate, and probably also it's uh, free for the first year. Usually it's about 80 to 90 or so dollars a year for that little lock and not everyone needs it but you're gonna need it if you've got some website that sells products collects information you know that needs to have secure connections because more and more um, hacks are happening more and, and more uh, credit cards are being stolen and accounts are being broken into and all of that they they revealed recently that uh, the IRS had been hacked recently and it was bigger than they thought, worse than they thought it was. So every aspect of online security is under attack. And I'm not saying you're going to get hacked and all of that, but if you have this extra security and you have sensitive information on your website, it might be uh, it might behoove you to invest in SSL. It is an extra cost, but it would be worth it in security. In this I class, know. yeah. Watch on that. I remember helping a friend with an SSL because we set up mm -hmm. some e-commerce e stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, when I set it up, like I ended up by accident setting it up for like every page of its site. Does that like use additional resources that aren't necessary, like perhaps making it slower? Hmm. I don't know if it will make it slower, but what what might happen is that 
uh, if you have insecure items on a page and you're putting the SSL on that page, you may get a conflict in that the user gets notification that says insecure content is on the secure page. Would you like to enable it? People are going to be confused. Like, what's insecure? Am I trying to get hacked? Yeah. Is someone hacking me? So I don't think it's uh, resource issues. It's just that the protocol to connect the user to the page yeah. is a little confused and which will further confuse the user because a lot of people are not tech savvy when they see weird messages they'll yeah. get scared and stuff. So the norm would be a, to limit the use of, of this uh, type of a addresses to like where you have a contact page or where you're taking payment or whatever, right? Whenever well, you're getting information from the user, right? At the minimum, I would say yes. But nowadays, we're so we're hopefully getting much more used to that. We're seeing that lock all over the place. Might as well have it all over the place. But the problem about that again is then, are you mixing insecure content with secure content? If you are, and that's going to be a problem, then yeah, it might be better just to keep the secure protocol on the places that need it. Yeah. What what constitutes that insecure? If you have iframes. If you've got an iframe on a page that's loading a web page from some other like server, um, hmm, possibly. But I think YouTube itself now is just encrypting everything. Google is getting pretty good about activating SSL on everything, even watching yeah, cat they're, videos. They're doing that for their scripts. Right there, I'm on the YouTube homepage, and it's secure. You know, it's going to be secure when I watch all of those uh, how to uh, build a treehouse videos. Uh, so. It's becoming a norm. We might not even notice it, but behind the scenes, it's very important. So there's a server right there. Um, recommended by WordPress since 2005, etc. Okay, so Bluehost. This is one of the big ones. Um, another one that is a competitor uh, is HostMonster.com. I'm mentioning some here that I have personally had experience with uh, for myself or for clients because there's so many of them I cannot vouch for all of them and if someone asks me what do you think about this one if I haven't used it I have no opinion I haven't used it um, but if I if my non opinion is not good enough you can always look up uh, let's say I've got some provider called mom and pop local sites and I'm gonna search for reviews or testimonials I'm gonna search I'm gonna get people's opinions on that is mom and pop local sites.com a legitimate one to put my website I don't know I've never heard of them they might be but if I search for reviews or testimonials of that company I might find a good answer I remember several years ago there was a I'm sure there's still a version of it around but several years ago, I remember coming upon a website that, that had a list of a bunch of service providers and like a quick review of it. But everyone can become a service provider, so that list probably got really huge and unwieldy and not updated. But all I can say is, um, oh, there's a mom and pop house in Murrieta. But uh, all I can say is my opinions of those that I have worked with, um, Bluehost I've dealt with, and they've been fine and uh, host monster all of these that I've worked with they've been fine it, it really depends on your needs your budget uh, what kind of website you're you've got up there if you need a lot of traffic maybe Bluehost for its price is too expensive but maybe over on GoDaddy or host monster or whatever is better you can switch between providers just like you can switch from AT&T to Verizon and keep my phone number I can keep my web address and my website and transfer it from domain provider to provider. It might not be as easy as transferring a phone number, but you can do it. And I've had that experience where uh, a client several years ago, they were on Yahoo. They were paying so much money a month to Yahoo to have their website, and it wasn't anything special at all. They were super overpaying. So we took them out of um, Yahoo and put them on GoDaddy, and it was a real big challenge to get them out of Yahoo. Yahoo was dragging their feet so much to get them out of their system into GoDaddy. And I've had it where, okay, we've been we've had this client on GoDaddy, we need to transfer them over to Bluehost. That one was relatively easy. Things get easier, um, but you are able to go from company to company. 
host monster over here, superior support, powerful hosting, starting at 495. So um, over here they were saying their own prices 395. Well, it's still a little cheaper, but then it goes back to 795 after one year. Usually it's the lower pricing if you sign up for a full year. Exactly. So month to month is a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, these uh, gatekeepers to the internet, they're all in competition with each other and they're all have these deals and often, not oftentimes, but some, to some degree they're a little bit too good to be true. Uh, but that's why we can shop around. So they're all going to tell you about how great they are. Here's a live chat as well, a phone number, log in. Um, I noticed that one of the selling points that they have is they're going to give you Google AdWords credit or Bing credit. And um, in, in this class, one of the big topics is SEO, of course, which is to get more traffic to your website, uh, as we're seeing little by little. One of the ways to get traffic to your website quickly is to pay for it, to pay Google or Bing or Yahoo, etc., to put your page uh, more visible to people. Um, we'll touch on that stuff, but usually we're, we're talking about the free stuff. But look at this. Some of these providers uh, sign up with them, and they'll give you $100. They'll give you $100 to spend on getting more hits through Google, $100 to get more hits on Bing. Yes? Will $100 really... Definitely. Yeah, any amount of money will help. The more you pay, of course, the more results. And uh, I've got a lot of experience uh, more on the pay-per-click of social media rather than the pay-per-click of the search engines. They all have their, their own uh, pros and cons. But I've seen that spending $5 on Facebook attracts still a lot of traffic. So you don't have to be at a hundred dollars, at a thousand dollars, and such. Any amount helps. Wow. But the more you spend, the more you get. <clears throat> Would you rather be powering the system? Yeah. Yeah. You see the result. You see how it's good. Those hundred dollars are good, and then you say, "Well, I have a, I have a budget of I can spend twenty dollars a month." and then get a little bit more out of that. So it is, it is useful. Um, sometimes people think it's a dirty word or a trick to pay for this stuff, and it can be abused, of course. I can spend $500 and buy all these keywords and really flood the competition and abuse them. The search engines will gladly take your money. But um, you know, if you're going to do it right and you're going to do it legitimate, it is a good thing. It is a good way to get the ball rolling. Um, for us, if my company got hired for a client, we would talk to them, get a strategy, you know, the marketing strategy, homework, and all of that, and figure out, well, should we spend maybe $20 this month on a, on a little bit of Google advertising, and then maybe $20 on Facebook, and then do that for a few months, and then see how it goes, in addition to doing free stuff, and then check back in three months and see how it's going. Because no legitimate SEO company should be telling you, you're going to be number one in a month. You're number, going to be number one in three months, or even nine months, or 12 months. No legitimate SEO company should set a timetable of results, because uh, this stuff is an ever-moving target, and it's a changing industry. And so if some company tells you, you're going to be number one, you're going to be the number one realtor in a month, there's a thousand other realtors in this city. Uh, to get to number one, and if you just started your realty website this year, you know, it's going to be a real uphill battle, even if you're paying, even if you're dumping $500, $1,000 a month into this advertising. So it's a long term thing, SEO. But here, the cool thing is that some of these companies give you some head start. You're going to see oftentimes 24 hour tech support, which is great. Um, get your issues resolved. They have all of this software that you can install on your account. WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, Zencart, Magento, etc. Roundcube. So sometimes what I see also, and I used to do this and honestly it wasn't worth the hassle, but it might be useful for you. Sometimes these companies have an affiliate program. You create an account at one of these companies, 
you become an affiliate and then what you're going to do is when you get a client rather than taking them over to hostmonster.com you take them to your portal that hostmonster gives you such as web designs by victor dot hostmonster dot com and then you set up hosting and domains and all of that as an affiliate you're still setting up technically by hostmonster but you're getting a commission you are a middleman for selling hostmonster or bluehost or godaddy services and you take a little bit of that cut uh, let's say it's six dollars a month that you sell the service to the person and you know 495 goes to hostmaster and 295 goes to you um, that's a viable way also to be in this business you do web design for people on social media you're also an affiliate marketer for hosting as I said uh, I used to do it a few years ago it's kind of a hassle uh, back in the day I don't know if they made it easier but that could be a little bit of extra income there. What's that? You're not. Uh huh. I'm okay. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, resellers, affiliates, etc. Yeah, you uh, a little bit of a way to get a little bit extra money. Um, is it? Is it? Do you feel that it's easy and uh, it works and such? Maybe they improved it when I did it a few yeah. years ago. I didn't. Okay. You, you have your own page, uh, your own domain. Hmm. It's a private. Uh, Even if uh, your customers call, they call directly. Yeah. They, Exactly. You're you're just you're just there to facilitate that. You're not going to do the tech support and all of that. So it has it has its uses. I think the best option in order to get access to the resources and get the domains and the hosting for clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a modern way that a company would entice you because they're all in competition and there's so many of them. So if you become a cheerleader an advocate for them, then it's, it's even better for everyone. Uh, I'll mention one more. Um, the, other, the other big one, the one that has more fame, is GoDaddy.com. They're all in competition. They're all going to be showing you different prices, what's good. Here it's got $1 a month. Uh, again, read the fine print for all of these things. What are they providing? Um, this is saying your .com for $11.99, web hosting $3.99, why is that one so good with $1? Oftentimes there are some of these versions that are a lot of training wheels. You need a website, um, you can get online, you can do it with Dreamweaver, you can do it with WordPress, Joomla, Wix, all of these things. And some of, sometimes there's also these sort of like propri proprietary web building tools. Um, I know with these guys, that's, that's one of them, the website builder. The point is, any way that you build a website and that it does what you need it to do is the right way. If it's the right price for you, the right services and features, it's the right answer. Whatever I say may or may not really matter if you're getting the best results. If you are paying, you know, $40 a month, but it is resulting in a lot of sales and you're making, you know, three thousand dollars a month from your website then that's a great price you don't have to worry about switching over to the cheaper one or anything like that and so they all they're all gonna sell you the same sort of thing hosting domain maybe e extra email accounts over here they've got office 365 so if you want to uh, set that up with your the rest of the people in your company to be able to share and collaborate Word documents or use Outlook together and calendaring and all of that that's there. Is there a, a Brazilian link? I believe so. I believe they've also got the whole reseller plan somewhere. That's who I had it with a few years ago. But yeah, somewhere. A little bit advertising. If you go to sure. So you can buy your own account and buy a, a post. It's H, H, uh, high media? High, mm -hmm. high media. Oh, okay. No, no, no high. High media. Yes, high. H I M. H. 
m to net slab. Filter observed from the case in the green bar. Yeah. Right. Okay, uh, so these guys are a, a local, a local company or a national? Or? Yeah, from depending on Godot, it's in server. Oh, okay, and it's so that okay, okay, this is through GoDaddy, and it's just fully yeah. customized. Yeah. Oh, it looks like a you know. Like, the, you can get a retailer account, and then you sell to your customers, your domains, or hosting, whatever. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, so those are a few examples of uh, domain providers. Um, the the thing about it is that that's the that's the requirement for for the class. No book, but you need some sort of real .com .net .biz whatever you want. There's so many um, new extensions out there. There's course dot com there's dot club somewhere here we can get a list of all these new ones because the dot coms are taken all of these dot coms the web has been around 27 years and these names are taken for the ones that are somehow assigned to a country mm -hmm. is there a limitation like is there a requirement for someone like do you have to live in that country in order to get like a .mx or you have to check um, at the provider that provides that. Mm -hmm. Some can have it, you just have a P.O. box in the country, oh. and that's fine. Some, you need a bank in that uh, country, and others, you have to live in that country. So, uh, for example, .tv, which is yeah, so common. <laughs> yeah, that one's in an island called Tuvalu in the Pacific. Um, and they make most of their money that way, selling domain names. You don't have to live in Tuvalu. You know, I don't know. How, I don't know how big it is, but it's probably <laughs> one of the popular ones that I'm seeing now is also .io for a lot of tech companies. I believe that's in an area near England. It might be its own little area in England. There's some little island or something in in England. So, um, uh, anyone know um, Bitly? Yes. Yeah. The sh link shortening site, uh, it's bitly.com, but ly is Libya. And so Libya is having troubles. And so people were saying, what's going to happen with my bitly website that's in Libya? And they've got a civil war and all of that. Well, that's, that's what happens when companies, I mean, when countries have uh, these extensions. So somewhere I just wanted to look. Uh, I can never really find a really good list of what are all the brand new domain names. Because um, there's dot .xyz, there's dot .ninja, there's dot .guru. Um, let's see, list of new domain names. And they, they have like a schedule of release or something, right? Yeah. It's funny, I remember seeing like, oh, the new, whatchamacallit's going to come out. I'm like, oh, wow. Dot .pet. I can get a website yeah. for my pet. <laughs> so is there kind of like a, like a rush? When the stuff comes out, like when it's yeah. released, everyone's in Yeah, it, honestly, this whole thing's a scam. <laughs> it's like all of these brand new dot whatevers, but they're still giving the big companies first choice. Mm -hmm. So these big companies are buying up all of these names, Julia.pets. And when I want to go there and I have my local Julia's pet shop, and it's a $500 domain because someone else already bought it. So they're giving these other bigger companies first choice, and they've been rolling out these new domains now for like, it feels like two or three years now, little by little. And the problem, the other problem about it is the regular population has never heard of .club, .arrow, .condo, .pet. Everything's a .com for everyone. Um, Everybody's looking for a .com. Yeah, they're gone. After 27 years, you're not going to find... Julia'spets.com. Julia's. It's gonna be. It's. I bet you it's gonna be a spam site that will re, that will sell you this name for a thousand dollars. Oh, it's not around. Actually, I'm gonna go buy it. I'm waiting for Julia's pet. You're gonna have to change your name to Julia. Yeah. 
Julia's Pets. Hmm. I just need to wait for Julia's Pets to one day come knocking for it. Um, but what I'm saying is that the problem is with all of these brand new domain names, the public needs to get educated. The public needs to know that there's .pet and .arrow and .ninja and .xyz and all of that. There's .cool. Um, the, the new social network Peach, their official website is peach.cool. They're not going to be able to get peach.com. That was taken 20 years ago. Peach.cool is what they've got for their, for their website. No one knows that. No one's going to stumble into that. And uh, so eventually, as more people know about these names, they'll matter. But if you cannot get victorswebdesigns.com, maybe I can get victorswebdesigns.cool. But I'm going to have to work harder than to get that name on my Twitter and on my Facebook and on my business cards and skywriting and all of that so that people know that it's not Victor's big, victorsdesigns.com, it's victorsdesigns.cool. And so I mentioned Peach like on day one, and yes, there's the Android version now. So if you're not on Peach yet, you are falling behind. Um, so for the um, for the assignment, it's not. I'm not going to give it out yet, even though I've been saying that this is coming. I'm still going to give you guys one more week. There's no there's no homework for this assignment just yet. What I'm going to tell you is you need to research and you need to decide on a domain name provider. I just mentioned three of them. There's a bunch of them. You need to go through the process. I can't, I can't do step by step this sort of lecture uh, because you need to uh, put in your own credit card information and home information and all of that. We're going we're gonna to break and we're going to have some lab time and I recommend at this point while I'm here for you to set up an account at one of these providers. If you already have one from a previous class or on your own or whatever, you can use it. That's fine. Uh, but again, there's no required book. You need a website. Go get yourself .com, .net, .biz, .ninja, whatever you want. And then on that, we're going to uh, use WordPress uh, because then the next assignment is going to be to start using your own domain name because the whole point of this class is to get traffic to your website. We don't want to take traffic to WordPress.com training wheels. We want a real website to apply everything that we're learning in this class to a real website. Uh, there's no homework yet, so you can still think, okay, I'm going to make a website. What's it going to be about? I'm going to go spend on this. It's going to be between $20 and $80. You say, that's expensive. No. A lot of the books that you get are expensive. Those medical books, the CIS 101 bundle is like $120. And that's, that's a book for a class. Here's a website, a piece of the internet. So even if you're spending $80 on this for one year, you've got a piece of the internet. Question? Yeah, uh, another thing about the hosting companies, uh, it will be to have a BPS. BBS? Virtual Private Server. Oh, VPS. Um, if it's affordable to you, sure. You may find some about uh, $35, $40 yeah. per month, and uh, you have like uh, 50 gigabytes. Yeah, I'm for sure. Yeah. If you want to work, work, work on this field, maybe it will be compared to doing the server. If you'd like to go through that route of being a reseller and such, or affiliate, that's very valuable. But for some people, for in, in order to host the, the websites for your own clients, mm. then you may be able to charge for service and hosting at the same time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But not everyone, perhaps, in this class has that goal. But that is a good goal. If, you, if you're taking these classes to become a web designer and all of that, this might be another thing to put in your back pocket to be a full-featured web designer. You not only do I... Full package. The full package. Not only do I design the sites and do I run social media, but I also host it, getting a little cut on the side. Were you very sure that you want to keep that customer with you because his web, web page is on your home? Yes. Server. Yeah, that's a bit of an advanced tactic, but definitely could be valuable. So uh, your homework, not official homework at the moment is you should really think about what kind of domain name to get. Um, you can do research on these companies and look up domain names. Uh, do your research about which one you want. 
Again, avoid the one that says managed WordPress. Um, just try to get like the basic kind of system. I'll be here till the end of the day if you want to try to do it right now. We, I can look over your shoulder to see what you're doing. Um, but that's going to lead us into the rest of the class and the next homework. So any general questions at this point? Yes? Uh, were the uh, other homeworks created for uh, last week for the, uh, for the WordPress? If there's any uh, missing homeworks yet, I haven't quite gotten to it, and I apologize, but I, I hope to get to them all, the final ones, this weekend. So if, so if you turned it in, I should be able to grade it. Any other general questions? So the homework is going to be to make sure you get a web hosting service provider. The homework is actually going to be to use it. We'll have another lecture and what it actually is to use it next time. Okay. But the kind of unofficial homework for the moment until next time is to get the hosting okay. provider. Because the next assignment. Assumes that you've got the provider, yeah. And if you're really advanced, because all of this stuff is for pay, and yes, you can go to these free ones. I don't recommend the free ones. One of the big famous ones, I shouldn't even mention it, but 00, what's it called? 00 webhost.com, I think. Yeah, these guys. Free service. Um, I've used them before a few years ago. You get what you pay for. You are going to get some free hosting. It's going to be slow. I don't recall if it has advertising, but some of these free ones, they put advertising on your site because it's free. And these guys I know got hacks recently. So all of these free accounts that everyone has here got hacked. They do sell a paid version, and notice here then, $3.99 a month comparable to everyone else. For free, you get one gigabyte and blah, blah, blah. You don't get a .com and such for free. You still have to pay and all of that. So again, this is another option. I don't recommend them, really. I'm just letting you know about them. Go for a reputable paid one like the one I've just said. Um, but if you're, you know, a super hacker, you can create a, uh, a server in your closet and run it off there, and that'll be fine for the class. But um, you want some sort of online presence. So uh, I'll um, wrap up at this point. Upload the the video as as always. Check the videos. I've got them on Blackboard and um, have some lab time until the end of the day. And if you need my help, I'll be here. And we'll do it again um, next time. So do set up their own server. Do they notice a <coughs> big difference in speed usually compared to, like, say, shared hosting with Google? So you're saying if someone does set it up on their own private server at home and yeah. such? The big I, I mean, is the, the hassle of doing that? Because, I mean, I've been thinking about doing it. Is it really worth it? I mean, do you think? Well, let me ask you this. Why do people climb a mountain? Because it's it's there, it's worth it, it's fun, whatever. If you're setting up your own server in the closet, it's not going to be worth it. But it's going to be fun, and yeah. that might be worth it. So I myself, you know, I I play with that stuff, and I've got I've got a little little Linux box in the closet, and I've got it with its own IP and all of that, and it was hard to set up, but it was fun, and it was an interesting challenge. Um, quality wise, it, I am going to say though that it's going to depend on your internet provider. If you've got, you know, a 10 megabit download speed, okay, you're going to have that sort of speed. And these AT&T and all of these companies, they wow you with so much download speed and they never tell you the upload speed. The upload speed is always terrible. So you've got your own home server, people are connecting to your server, and then your server is serving, is sending them the data across the internet at 2 megabits per second, 1.5 megabits per second. So again, it's not worth it, but it's fun. And for this class, that's all you need.